Welcome back, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I'm excited to show you a webinar that I recorded one year ago for my Patreon members. It's titled Electric Panel Survey. We're gonna discuss how to calculate home electrical loads, when you can add capacity, box sizes, and wire sizes. Without further ado, here's the training. So in this training, we're gonna cover how you calculate the home's electric load. If you're able to add capacity, what the typical sizes are of these panels, and then of course verifying the wire size. Just because you have the right size breaker doesn't necessarily mean the wire can handle it, right? So we're gonna cover these four really quick important points. And don't get me wrong, there's gonna be a little math here. So all of these are actually identified in the National Electrical Code as far as steps to identifying the load for the building. And what I'm gonna talk about first is the basic electrical load of the house, the basic needs and what's required by code. In order to come up with these uh, full watts, you actually have to multiply the square feet by the constant of three. And that will give you the starting watts needed for just lighting and general use of the building. Then in step two, you have to look at the small appliance load. At minimum, as part of National Electrical Code, you need to have two small appliance circuits in the kitchen and one small appliance circuit in the laundry room. So at minimum, three 20 amp circuits. Now, most homes have at least three, probably four or more. And I'm just gonna use my house as an example here as I walk through this. My particular house has four of these 20 amp circuits in the kitchen and the laundry room. So when you multiply those four circuits by what the typical wattage draw is for a small appliance, which is 1500 amps, you end up in step number two, in this example, with 6,000 watts. Then this is where you have to get a little bit of detail and knowing what the general watt usage is for some of these normal appliances can go a long way in time and why an electrician can do this quickly, right? So in this list, you can see at my house, we have an electric range, a water heater, a dishwasher, a garbage disposal, of course, an electric clothes dryer, and a microwave. So these are all separate circuits that were run. So we need to account for these in the total wattage for the building. So this is step number three. We need to add all the wattages up for all appliance or motor bearing systems. So in this example, when we add all of the watts up of these appliances that we have separate circuits for, it ends up being 22,350 watts. Keep in mind, this does not include the wattage of your HVAC system. Then in the next step, we actually just add those three subtotals together. So in this example, the total wattage is needed for the electrical load in my house is 35,550 without including the HVAC system. Now I'm gonna tell you and show you how to get to if that matches the electric panel in a second. What I want to include is can we upgrade the HVAC system and accommodate, let's say, one of the leading cold climate heat pumps made by a manufacturer that we all know. This would be the largest heat pump that's hyperheat that they make. That eight zone, let's say 48,000 BTU heat pump, something that could cover the whole house in most instances. And in this example, when you multiply the rated amps by 230 volts, you end up with 9,660 watts that you would need to add to this, right? Remember, if we're upgrading, obviously that addition could be lower because we're gonna remove another system, let's say an old heat pump, right? So when you're swapping something out and the wattage draw is less, this is a really easy solution. But what if we're going to add capacity because we're replacing uh, just an air conditioner that used less watts with a high efficiency heat pump now? Or we're gonna replace a furnace or boiler. We're gonna take that offline and put in a heat pump. When we're reducing the watt draw, it's really easy to say yes. So when you're replacing those items that have a higher watt draw, like electric resistance heat in a house, it's really easy to know that this is gonna work. But when you're increasing it, will the existing service and panel be able to handle this? So I need to add, in this instance, the 9,660 watts for this large dual fan cold climate heat pump into 
what I already came up with for the total needs of the home. Now, if we don't add the heat pump wattage into what's needed, you can see we just have 36,550 watts. When we divide that by 230 volts, we end up with 159 amps. Now, what you need to know is 159 amps is not a service size you can get, right? They're common normal increments. The minimum service size that you can actually access for a residential home, in this example, would be the next size up, 175 amps. Now, let's take a look at what we need when we add the 9,660 watts for that new heat pump. When we add that to the total needs of the home, we end up with 46,210 watts. And you divide that total by 230 volts and you can see we land right at 200 amps. So yes, it is possible if I have a 200 amp service to add this heat pump to my home. Unfortunately, that's gonna leave no room for improvements with other circuits. So if I wanted to add some other electrical circuit for a new appliance, I wouldn't be able to because that heat pump's now installed. Now, a lot of times you can just take a quick look at the panel and just the physical size may lead you into how big that service actually is. Um, as an example, is a great picture on the left-hand side of a 60 amp service, right? You can get them very, very small on let's say some small uh, ranch houses or trailers or um, even condos, right? So a lot of times it's not feasible to do an upgrade on a service this small in a condo building because you can't do all of the condos upgrades without upgrading the wire that's going to these and the main service coming to those buildings. But a lot of times on single family homes, you could make that upgrade and it's still cost effective. And of course, the picture on the right is of a normal 100 amp panel. Now, just because you have a panel this size does not mean it was done correctly. It should match the service wire going to it. And if the electrician or the homeowner pulled an electrical permit when they did this work, I'm willing to bet that's actually the case. But you wanna verify. In my instance at my house, I actually have a uh, 200 amp circuit wire running to a 100 amp panel. Because when I bought my house, the wire was damaged and I knew I was gonna end up doing an upgrade. So I had the electrician run the larger wire to handle a bigger service when I could afford the panel change, right? Also, just because you have a 100 amp panel doesn't mean there's not sub panels. A lot of times they're located right next to the main panel. And if they're a large service or you have, let's say, PV panels on the roof and things like that, you might have multiple sub panels. Keep in mind, there should be no more than three disconnects to shut off all the power to the house though. That is in the code. So when you're adding capacity to a building, you have some options. You could, if there's enough capacity in that panel, just add a breaker. But just because there's a spot for an additional breaker does not mean you can just add capacity to that panel. They're not interchangeable. You gotta do the math, steps one through four that I just outlined. Of course, if there's not enough spaces, there are some options when it comes to breakers. You could use some of the minis and actually take up less spaces in your panel if you can handle the additional load. Or you might have to add a sub panel if that wire could handle the additional load. I think a lot of times though, when it's full and it's a two, uh, 100 amp service, then you're probably looking at an upgrade. And don't get me wrong, it's been a little while since I've done this and prices keep going up. But a lot of times you're looking at at least $2,000 to $2,500 to do an electrical upgrade, a panel upgrade to a house because you're running the wire plus you're uh, replacing the panel and all the breakers. Now here's a great chart to take a look at to verify conductor sizing. There are two options for running conductors. Now, of course, most of us is familiar with the copper sizing, right? And copper, unfortunately, is getting very expensive over the years. And there are alternatives to running wire uh, for a service to a house. You could get aluminum, which is pictured in the top left here, or aluminum with copper cladding. And that's pictured in the top right of these pictures. Uh, you can notice as we go up, it goes up in, in actual cost. And the wire size, actually, as you get closer to pure copper, the physical dimension gets a little smaller. So you can see the, the gauge size based on the service rating. So if you have just a 100 amp service, you could run number two aluminum or aluminum with copper clad, or you'd have to run a number four copper, right? So those are the sizes that are outlined here. Make sure 
uh, that it can match, it, that, that, that the wire size matches your panel size before you go ahead and add breakers or have the electrician come out like it's a simple um, addition for the circuit. If the wire does not match the breaker panel that is there or the service panel that's there, an upgrade to the wire is also required and that's, that's a lot of the cost and the labor uh, when you talk about replacing our ser a service upgrade. All right, so what did you think about the training on electric panel survey? If you like this sort of training and you want to get it one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can join and get access for as little as $8 a month. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.